The Archimedean Spiral. Not only such an awesome piece of geometry that was developed over a thousand years ago, but turns out it can also help you beat Doctor Strange in a fight. Now this piece of geometry was developed by a person called Archimedes back in 200 BC. This guy was everything. He was a mathematician, he was an engineer, he was an astronomer, that's just to name a few. Kind of makes you feel bad about what you're doing. Now, we're gonna be covering what is an Archimedean spiral, how you construct it, and also parametrize it, what other cool stuff did Archimedes do, and then we're gonna have a look at how you code some of these animations. So a spiral is kind of just like a complicated circle. Okay, where you take a circle, it kind of goes about the center point, and it keeps rotating around forever and ever with respect to time. If you imagine you're just circling around, or as a spiral, as you're moving around with respect to time, you just go further and further out. There's also a dependency on the radius, makes it bigger and smaller. Now we're gonna dodge the mass for the time being and get into constructing one. So you take a circle and then you draw four circles, all of which have the edge of their radius touching the center of your middle circle. You then draw a radius out to each sort of corner of your circle, which will make 12 of them. And you wanna put a dot there. Eight of those dots are gonna be on the intersections of your original circle and the four circles you've drawn. Now, if you're a little nifty with your mathematics, you'll know that these dots are actually separated by pi on six or 30 degrees. You then wanna draw the following line, but stop where it intersects that second radius. From here, you then draw 12 straight lines, including the one drawn, that are representative of the 12 radius that already exist on the circle. This is gonna construct our inner circles, which help us then plot the coordinates of our spiral. So you've got your first one, and then you match each of those circles with their corresponding radius, and that's your coordinate point. And then you draw a spiral that goes along these coordinate points. And once you parametrize this, you can put this on a Cartesian plane and keep spiraling around forever and ever and ever. Now, let's get to the maths of some of this. A fundamental is that you've got to know that the circumference of a circle is given by 2 pi r. Going into a little bit of detail, r is the radius and 2 pi is just a number. It's like six and a bit. Imagine you take the radius and you wrap it around the circle. You will notice that it goes around six times and a bit. It actually, in fact, goes around the circle two pi times. So the circumference is actually equal to two pi times the radius. Another fundamental is knowing parametric equations. It's sort of like as time moves on, the x and y coordinates are given by two different functions, a function to tell you where you are in X land and a function to tell you where you are in Y land. In our spiral, the X and Y coordinates are just given by those two functions separated by a comma underneath the graph. Now, if we pause at this point here, this is seven pi on six. And if you remember, that's the exact coordinate seven pi on six around the circle. And as time moves on, the spiral kind of moves outwards in a linear fashion with respect to time, which is given by that T multiplier in your X land and your Y land. And it's gonna be circular because of your sine and cos. Some other really cool stuff that Archimedes discovered was that the area between a parabola and a straight line is four and three times the size of the maximum triangle inscribed within the parabola and the straight line. Let me explain. This was Archimedes method of exhaustion. And so if we consider this example here, the yellow triangle has one unit squared. Then if you go off and you create another triangle within there, above and to the left, both of them are gonna have a base of one and a height of a quarter. Since there's two of them, an eighth each, the total area is a quarter. Then you do the same thing. You've got this purple guy there, there's four of them. The base is a half, each height is 1 16th that's gonna give you 1 64th, but there's four of them, so you get 1 16th. And the total area, you might recognize this is gonna be a geometric progression. Now keep in mind, Archimedes didn't necessarily have the formula to calculate a geometric series, so he proved the second term onwards geometrically to have a sum of a third, which I've just got Python to animate out for you. 
and you can actually take this to the level of infinity. This would be an infinite geometric sequence where you just keep narrowing down and zooming in and considering the triangles and it turns out that their area each time is a quarter of the previous area. Now, if we're doing this calculation nowadays, we just take an integral, right? Because that's how we've learned to do mathematics. But keep in mind, this guy was doing this sort of math in BC. This is like a thousand years before calculus was even invented, which is just insane. Now, I think it's really refreshing to see that calculus and geometry have such a beautiful, nicely linked connection to describe the answer of different things. And lastly, let's get into some of the code because it's just so nice to see that Madam can make these beautiful geometric abstractions and link the parametric equations and the visuals and everything so nicely together, right? Now, I'm only, there's a lot to explain, so I'm only gonna look at the circle and the spiral, right? Now, as we saw, there was a circle plane that was defined, that's, that's just the number plane for the circle. And there was a spiral plane. Again, it's just a number plane. And notice I've given them like the exact same lengths. Like you got a length of five for X and Y because I want to go out from negative two to two with both X and Y. So I didn't want anything to feel a little, you know, distorted, right? Put one to the left here, put one to the right there and add some coordinates. And we have some value trackers. This one's going to track the radius, R for radius. And this one's going to track the end point, E for end point. Now, Let's get into it. We've got our, firstly, our circle here. So this is the equation of the circle. It is a parametric curve and a new little update in Manum. Instead of going get graph or get parametric graph or whatever, it's got plot. Okay, I think it's nicer, less words to type out. Or if you, we could just use interpreter, whatever. We're just gonna plot parametric curve. And remember, parametrizing stuff is dependent on only one value of T where you get, and let's draw this out here, x comma y. So the x coordinate is given by some function of t and the y coordinate is also given by another function. It could be the same function, but it is typically another function of t. So f of t and g of t to give you your y coordinate and your x coordinate with respect to time moving onwards. Now in our case here for the circle, it's just r times by cos of t comma r times by sine of t. And my r value is being tracked by my value tracker. That's why I've got this always redraw statement there. And then the range, and then the range that we are considering goes from zero times zero through to the end value of the function, which is as time moves on. That guy there. Very cool. And now you saw it was the color of the rainbow. Well, you just set the color and make them the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and purple. Then I've got a dot for my circle, which I just move to get end. Again, we are always redrawing that because it's just always updating. Very, very similar thing for my spiral, right? Always redraw. Again, it's plotting the parametric curve. In this scenario here, it's gonna be R divided by two pi times by my function, which is t cos of t, that's gonna give me my x. And then the similar thing for y is the same thing, r over two pi times by t sine of t. And I've got this as an array, right? That's just how you wanna plot your parametric stuff. Again, the t range goes from zero to that same value tracker, the same guy up there. Again, the colors of the rainbow. And we've put a dot on the end of that, get end of that. Okay, notice that I'm, I've skipped over this little detail here, but I'm calling the circle onto the circle plane and I'm calling the spiral onto the spiral plane. Okay, let's not forget that little detail there. Then I've got my equations. It's just a little bit of latex. Okay, latex for my uh, circle equation, position it where I want to. Remember to size it, then move it. Don't move it, then size it. So size, then move. Similar thing for my spiral, size, move. 
And then again, I've got my titles, which is just circle and spiral, just putting them up the plane and versus the other ones, which is just down the plane, just positioning however I want them to. Okay, then you saw I also had a timer. I was just tracking the time that the animation was playing for. So I've got the text, which is just positioned here. That was a little bit of trial an error to get it into the right position. So I just rendered it at a low quality until I got it positioned nicely between the two axis. Then I've got the number. Now the number is always updating to decimal number, set it to the value of E, which is our end point. Okay, scale it down such that it, you know, fits nicely there with that scale and put it next to it. See, so scale then position. All right, so now notice E is tracking the end point of the functions but it's also my time tracker. Which is really, really nice. Then I play everything out because a lot of this is just dependent on some value trackers. Okay, we like start, we get, you know, the, we get some stuff played out there. I add this stuff here, all the stuff which is dependent on my value trackers and then run them. Now remember to run any time you've got the E value, this was my time tracker. Okay, remember to keep it at a linear rate function. Time is linear, okay, time is not exponential. So make sure that the function you're moving the animation at is linear, otherwise it's gonna look really, really, really weird. Uh, then I just animate out the radius values. And it is as simple as that.